Isn't this great? This is fascinating to me. I walk around and I see little geysers, vents of steam coming out of the ground, hot water bubbling, mud pots, hot air and steam underneath the ground pushing up through the mud. This is great. This is fascinating. You know, the ground beneath my feet here is very hot. You can tell. The water that flows through this area also becomes very hot. And we can see that it's hot and bubbling. Let's go ahead and check the temperature of that water. Now, I have a thermometer to attach to the end of this pole. This probe on the end is what I'll insert into the water to check the temperature. Let's put it out over the water and check the temperature, then we'll lower it in. Okay, now right above the water, you can see the temperature there. Watch how fast the temperature rises when I actually dip it in. Here we go. You can see the needle moving. Pretty soon, we're about 150. The water here is very hot. Beneath my feet, there's a lot of heat energy, and we can see evidence of it on the surface like this fumarole behind me. All this energy is stored inside the Earth. Wouldn't it be great if we could use it somehow? Here at the Mammoth Pacific LP Geothermal Power Plant, that's exactly what they've done. Wells are drilled into the Earth, and hot water is pumped to the surface. These pipes contain water that is fresh out of the ground and very hot. Now, the pipes are covered with insulation. That serves two purposes. One, it protects me if I touch them, but it also keeps the water inside hot. Here at the end, we've uncovered the end of the pipe, and these pieces of metal are heated by the hot water inside, about 330 degrees. Now, if that's true, I should be able to see that when I pour some water on it. Check this out. <laughs> Let me show you again with an ice cube. These pipes are really hot. The hot water travels through the pipes to the electrical generating station, where it is used to heat up a liquid called isobutane. The isobutane expands as it heats up and pushes on the blades of a turbine, kind of like a pinwheel inside a metal tube. The turbine spins a generator. Inside the generator, just as we would expect, coils of wire move within a magnetic field to produce electricity. At Mammoth Pacific, enough electricity is produced to supply 40,000 homes. Ted Cordoposi is a systems analyst here, and he's going to help us understand how they monitor the system. Ted, thanks a lot. You're welcome. So what do we have here? What information can we get? This screen can give you information from all parts of the plant area. OK, so here's like an overview screen. Can you, for example, let us know how much electricity you're producing right now? Sure. If I select PLES electric, I get a screen that indicates various information regarding the power production. All right. So for example, I can see these bar graphs on here. And those are those kilowatts? Yes. So this graph here tells me, the arrow by it, that we have 11,813 uh, kilowatts. Almost 1,200 kilowatts are being produced right now. That's correct. OK, so the water comes in at 336 degrees in this case. Yes. What happens to the water then? Well, if you press these keys, you can go to the next screen. Are we on four now? Yes. This represents the water that's being injected. So back into the ground after you've used it. That's correct. All right. The current temperature is 161. So you've used the heat out of the water to produce the electricity. Now it's cooler, and you're putting it back into the earth. That's correct. Will it be reheated again then in the earth? Yes. When we were in looking at the computer, we could see that the temperature of the water coming out of the ground was about 330 degrees. Then we use the heat and cool off the water. When we put that water back into the ground, the computer showed us that it was about 160, maybe 170 degrees. This is actually an injection well where the water is pumped back down in to be heated by the rock. Let's go ahead and test the temperature by inserting this thermometer. So we can see the temperature is rising up to over 100, and it continues to rise. So these pipes are insulated, thank goodness. Even though this is the water that's cooled off, you'll notice that it's pretty hot. And just as we suspected, the needle slows down and begins to register a temperature slightly more than 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This water, pumped back into the earth, will be heated again 
and used another time to generate electricity. The isobutane, the chemical which expanded and turned the turbines, is cooled down and used over and over again also. It moves through tubes which are cooled by fans. Now here's something for you to think about. Could you build a power plant like this anywhere near your location? Do you have the necessary geologic conditions? Let me tell you a few things about this area to give you some way to get started. Millions and millions of years ago, these were active volcanoes. This is also an area known for its earthquakes, and there are several earthquake faults nearby. These mountains were lifted up by violent earthquakes. Mount Whitney, for example, is the second highest peak in North America. In this highly geologic area, hot magma is relatively close to the surface. The magma heats a layer of solid rock above it. The heat is conducted through the rock and heats water contained in the layer above it. Heated water moves through cracks or fissures which have been formed by the earthquakes in the next layer. The water travels through the cracks and may emerge as a geyser, bubbling mud pots, or a fumarole. These are unique geologic conditions. Does your area qualify? It's great to see that here in Northern California where the geologic conditions are just right, the folks at Mammoth Pacific are taking advantage of this renewable resource to generate electricity.